Thank you for all the interest in joining today. Uh, my name is Jessica Quick. I'm the director at the Peel Newcomer Strategy Group. We're one of the local immigration partnerships uh, across Canada, and we're focused in Peel region. And we're going to be providing um, a bit of background about a new project that we're just starting. So it's um, exciting to see everyone here around the table. And uh, we're also going to be using this time not only to give background, but also to engage you in, in, in providing a little bit of input as we get started. So looking forward to that as well. I'll start by um, acknowledging that Peel, uh, we're meeting in the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit. In particular, we acknowledge the treaty, the territory of the Anishinaabek, Huron-Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and the Ojibwe Chippewa peoples the land that is home to the Métis, and most recently, the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, who are direct descendants of the Mississaugas of the Credit. So it's within this context that we're having today's discussion, and we recognize that it will be important to consider our connection and accountability to truth and reconciliation throughout this project. So I'm gonna start with, um, maybe we'll start with our slides, and that will give some context uh, to the project. Great, so the, the name of our project that we're starting with at least and open to your feedback is Regional Accountability Models for Settlement. Um, and so we're, we're focused on the Peel region uh, and this session today will give a bit of background and information as I mentioned, and we'll be explaining a little bit about that name and all the different components in those words. So I'll go to the next slide, thank you. Uh, so we're going to start today by giving some of that context to where this project started from and then give the um, description of the project itself and a little bit of our plan ahead. We'll have some time for questions and discussion and we'll have your input on guiding principles for the project. Then we'll follow uh, with the first steps looking ahead as well as uh, thinking about our next forum coming up and hearing your feedback about this forum in particular before checking out. So um, I'll pause there to see if there's any questions on that agenda. Um, and feel free to use the chat box as we move through the meeting as well. Afat. Jessica, just, uh, just for the sake of knowledge, uh, this mm -hmm. is a sort of a brand new idea and project mm -hmm. and and I know that you were involved to write this. Uh, so what kind of thoughts triggered you to bring this to the public and to us to start a project? Something came to your mind. Always there's something comes and they said, oh, that's a great idea. Maybe we'll put it there. What was that moment? Thank you. And this is a perfect segue um, of that to our, our next section. So. Um, I think we'll answer that question as the idea really comes from IRCC and uh, we're following from their lead. Uh, so um, I'm going to uh, move to the next slide to give context and thank you Varsha for your question um, that uh, thinking about who was invited to, to this meeting, we really did focus on agencies that serve newcomers um, so organizations um, that are within the settlement sector, but also beyond as well. And there's opportunity to share further with this recording and um, further inf information sessions. So just to give the context, I'm going to introduce our um, initial team. It's a project funded by Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada. And we have Stephanie Cattuli here, manager for the Settlement Network for the peel halton dufferin area, to speak a little bit more about that context. Um, um, peel Newcomer Strategy Group was invited to um, pr put together this project proposal, um, which was accepted um, by IRCC. And we're working in partnership with the Centre for Community-Based Research uh, so I'll be introducing the executive director, Rich Jansen, who you may know, as well as his colleague, Ruth Wilson, who's the senior researcher there. And I'm also working with um, Cassandra Bangay, who you know, uh, manager of research policy and evaluation, and uh, some further staff um, in research and policy there. And we're also working with some in-kind consulting students with the Public Good Initiative as well. Uh, so maybe at this time, I'll turn it to Stephanie to provide a few um, notes about the background on the project. 
Hey, uh, thank you, uh, Jessica. Uh, good morning, uh, bonjour to everyone. Um, it's, it's a pleasure to be speaking with you uh, today um, in this virtual space. I, I hope the year has started off well for, for everyone. Um, I, I, first of all, I want to thank uh, the Peel Newcomer Strategy along with the project team for organizing this information session today. Um, and I would like to extend my thanks to everyone uh, for participating today. Uh, during this session, uh, PNSG will be discussing a planning consultation process for developing models of community-based plans for settlement service delivery and funding in Peel. This is a very forward-thinking project um, and it is funded by RCC as part of the service delivery improvement stream. So I was asked to provide more context from IRCC. Um, we launched a request for quotation uh, that closed last year in April, 2021. Uh, this request for quotation is a tar was a targeted process. Um, in this case, a small number of local immigration partnerships and their counterparts, uh, Resolta de Migración Francophone, were invited to apply to this process. Requests for quotations were limited to the LIPS and RIFs um, due to their experience with environmental scanning and working with a wide range of stakeholders. The LIPS and RIFs were identified as being well positioned to play a role to support detailed local planning as well to assist in fostering collaboration within the sector. In all, there are 12 uh, uh, these such projects across Canada, and they're focused on large and medium centers that would have the community capacity for this type of uh, initiative. So in the end, we will be reviewing findings um, from possibly 12 different models. So what prompted this RFQ? Well, um, Significant events over the past years have underscored the uh, importance and the need for a coordinated community level response to service delivery. Um, we, we can think of, uh, uh, you know, Operation Syria as an example, or uh, most recently, or I should say currently, uh, COVID and the Afghan um, initiative. So things like this, you know, really um, highlight that communities are better position to quickly identify and respond to ongoing and urgent needs in local areas. Flexible governance models support the understanding that newcomer settlement and integration occurs locally um, and may lead to improved effectiveness of service delivery, delivery sorry, um, and interleading to better outcomes for newcomers. Well, we're always looking for ways to improve the settlement program um, and this project may help us with this purpose. The project really recognizes the importance of a locally driven approach to community-based planning and funding alternatives rather than a one size fits all uh, type of policy. Um, this type of funding, um, this type of, sorry, funding model is done already by other government departments such as ESDC. Um, but um, as, as was mentioned, this would be newer to IRCC. Uh, and this is why it falls under the umbrella of service delivery improvement. Uh, this project or these projects funded under this RFQ for community-based planning are best described as feasibility studies. So uh, IRCC wants to learn more about the opportunities and also challenges that uh, will emerge if an alternative approach to settlement funding is to be considered. So first of all, we need to know um, if there are different models that would work in the local community. Um, the models uh, could be to build a governance structure for community-based planning or for community-based planning and funding model. Uh, the model would need to demonstrate how it would be structured and operationalized within the communities, um, but also very importantly, if stakeholders would feel comfortable operating in such a different model. So um, I guess the point is, you know, IRC does not want to, if there's a different model considered, IRC doesn't want to impose a model this is a bottom-up approach, and the goal is to empower communities to be engaged in planning and decision-making. So uh, to manage expectations in, in, in terms of timeline, um, this particular project is only to consult and develop a model. So there's no expectation that there will be implementation following the conclusion of the project, and it will not inform our next CFP 2025, as unfortunately we won't have the findings in time because it is a, a, a three-year plan. However, um, I really encourage um, 
stakeholders to be actively participating in these consultations and share your ideas and concerns if you have them. Be like really be engaged uh, because the results from this RFQ will inform the broader settlement sector of various community-based models and their applicability to the settlement program and may support possible testing in the future. So this is a longer term vision, um, but I, I really want us to take this opportunity um, to, to be engaged with this project because it, you know, we, we want to create a solution that works for the local community. So I'll hand it back to Jessica so she can uh, go into the details of, of in, in the process of the project. I, I hope this answered um, a little bit more of the, the question about how this came to be. Thank you so Thank much, you. Stephanie. That's so helpful and um, really appreciate IRCC's forward thinking, as you mentioned, and um, your trust and commitment in the community process so that we can do some collective thinking on this. Perfect. So we'll move on to um, the next slide, which may help illustrate uh, a little bit of what we're talking about through this, uh, through this process as well. So this is just an illustration of, we have our current model at the top where we're really thinking about um, regional accountability. Um, right now it's flowing from Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada, IRCC for settlement funding to settlement service providing agencies who provide services to newcomers. And in turn, these agencies provide data back to IRCC through iCare database, for example, and other means. And I think that really speaks to some of the planning that occurs is there's um, various networks we also have among our agencies, but that planning um, still receives funding directly from the federal government. And in this potential future model, we see the red dotted line around a regional accountability model. Um, and so um, again, this will be a draft recommendation we'll be sharing with IRCC over our long consultation over a couple of years. And this is where we really need your input and contributions and thinking about what that looks like. And it's really a co-design process. So it's not something that's pre-designed. Um, we'll be thinking together about what that looks like and with the various levels of engagement in that process as well. So I'll, I'll turn it to the next slide. Um, so we're naming this regional accountability models for settlement in that accountability encompasses that process of funding and decision-making and planning based on the data. So our purpose through this project is to facilitate that community consultation process um, to develop a specific, specific plan for Peel um, and thinking about what that might look like. So our goals through this is to engage with our stakeholders um, such as yourselves around the table and think about a way to collect data for this community planning that could happen and identify potential funding hosts um, that are more regional level and build a collective vision for this potential new approach for governance and funding that will be forwarded to uh, IRCC. And it's great to hear that there's other such uh, projects across Canada um, with the 12 projects. Great, so I'll move on to the next slide. And I'm gonna start with the broader vision at the bottom and ladder up. Um, so I think we all agree that we want communities with comprehensive services and that requires some innovation as well as thinking about how we can link up our services together to meet the needs of newcomers. And so this is a way of thinking about where there might be a more of a regional role around community responsive and coordinated services. And that can lead to um, a very concrete report that we can um, kind of shape together and really develop that recommendation for a new funding and governance model that's a recommendation uh, to IRCC in terms of what could really work towards those larger goals. I'll move to the next slide. So this is the project roadmap. Um, there's three phases here. So we started off with the first phase which we, where we brought together some of the project uh, team and the partners around the table and really starting to share the information about the project. We'll be entering the next phase, which is more research-based and really thinking about who are our newcomers? Um, what data do we have currently? Um, how does the sector currently funded and, and what models exist in other jurisdictions? 
And how can we get more detailed information from uh, our service providers as well through focus groups? And out of that research phase in that first year, we'll be then moving into our third phase of locating a, a funding host and really reviewing models towards a recommendation for our final report to IRCC. And for those who are more engaged, we'll, there will be advisory committee meetings um, and a process evaluation. And throughout, we'll have this broad engagement as well, such as meetings like this for community forums, um, um, starting um, with today's and then moving into um, later in the summer of this year, um, mid research phase, and then um, closer to our recommendation phase at the end in phase three. Great. And so moving to the next slide, I'm going to turn it over to Cassandra to provide uh, more background and zooming in on that research phase. <clears throat> Hi everyone. So the research process will take place in three tiers. That'll take place over the course, as you can see, of 2022. And so the first phase is the newcomer demographic data summary, where we're going to be looking at immigration pathways and with the support of the public good initiative student consultants, building some infographics and data summaries around uh, key demographic information in Peel. Then we'll move on to the sector survey and review of existing models. Uh, so that's where we'll do a deep dive into the knowledge base that we have here in Peel and share broadly the survey with anyone who may touch uh, the process of accessing funding and, and governing the settlement sector. Uh, so with all community partners uh, having the opportunity to com complete this survey, uh, we'll synthesize the findings. And then uh, while we're busy at work at PNSG doing this, CCBR will be uh, researching existing models in our sector and others uh, to sort of think about different options that we might have to present to everybody uh, to consider. So these models are just options, food for thought at this stage. Uh, then in the final phase, uh, we'll do service provider focus groups. So we'll meet with um, managers, directors, executive directors to conduct uh, place and issue-based focus groups. Um, and so again, very broad consultation here where we'd like to engage you on your thoughts on potential uh, models or ideas uh, to build this model. Great, thank you, Cassandra. So we'll move to the next slide and just provide um, a piece on our collaboration model. So we have the, these information forums where we'll be connecting with the broader uh, stakeholders in Peel region around settlement. Uh, we'll have a more involved advisory committee. So if you're interested, there'll be a process um, to uh, apply to be a part of that as we'd like to get a diverse representation um, of eight to 12. And um, the advisory committee will be meeting uh, quarterly and we'll hear a little bit more um, about that in our uh, next slide. Um, and we also have our existing project team that's just started up. So Peel Newcomer Strategy, um, strategy group as the central convener and the Center for Community-Based Research um, to share their experience and expertise as co-facilitator and evaluator. Um, so Ashley, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Rich and Ruth at um, CCBR as we, as we use the acronym um, to talk a little bit about the advisory committee. Go ahead, Afat. Sorry for, um, before uh, they start, um, there's something came to my mind um, and, and forgive me if it's too early to ask, but, but I didn't see in your proposal that uh, there, is, there is a component of um, going back to the history of uh, funding model and then looking around what mm. funding models forward looking on those decades or years that we tried and then finish, and what was that? I'll give you one example. For, uh, for example, we had COYA model for five years, uh, which uh, for, this, for the sake of uh, uh, our, our colleagues that are on the table, is a Canada-Ontario immigration agreement. And then it was great because that table uh, brought on, uh, you know, Ontario government and and, and then IRCC, federal government together around the table talk about settlement and newcomers and, and an immigra uh, immigration. It was really, I, th I, th I think in my, my, my era, I think that 
five years was brilliant. There's so many good things happen. What I wanted to tell you that how about, you know, you just go a little bit backward and then see what happened and then get get them, get them and then come up with ideas. I don't remember municipalities get involved so far. This is a, as, as um, um, Stephanie said, this is a uh, forward looking uh, program, which is really is. Um, but uh, how about, you know, you just go back and then see what's going on, what will happen. And then is there any lesson to learn? Thank you. That's a brilliant idea. Thank you so much of that. Um, we've noted it down. And um, I think that's really important to consider is what has worked in the past and, and what models occurred in the past as well. So thank you so much. We'll definitely consider that. All right. Um, so we'll move on to describing the advisory committee. Thanks, Jessica. And hi, everyone. Good to, good to be here. Um, as Jessica said, uh, Ruth and I come from the Center for Community-Based Research, CCBR. We're located in Waterloo. We uh, uh, do work across Canada, including in, in Peel region. We have worked before and uh, uh, we're excited to be a part of this project and, and invited in um, to, uh, to help facilitate the process. And one of the principles in implementing a community-based approach is to make sure that the project is guided by community stakeholders. And in fact, we often make the distinction between the doers of a project, the project team, which Jessica just talked about on the previous slide, and the guiders of the project. So this advisory committee. Before the project team, the doers do anything, they're guided um, by this advisory committee. So we will have this advisory committee to make sure that the different stakeholder perspectives are actively involved in the project with the role of guiding the design and implementation of the project. And forming this group is the first step um, that we want to, to do. In a moment, we'll ask you to help us set the criteria for who should be on this committee. But we know for starters that uh, they need to think collectively, being invested in the collective newcomer settlement agenda of Peel. And we know that we want diversity of perspectives around the table. And beyond that, we'll let you guide us in an exercise that we'll do shortly. In terms of commitment, we're envisioning uh, quarterly meetings. And you can see there the uh, potential first meeting dates to get the ball rolling um, towards the end of February. And after we'll get your direction about more specific selection criteria, we'll open up an application process until February 3rd, and then we'll select those who best fit that criteria. And at the end of the meeting today, we'll give you more specifics about the application process. So really that is the overview, the information <laughs> that uh, we wanted to, to provide today. And uh, um, if that has started us off with questions, maybe other people have questions or, or clarifications um, and uh, we can have a open discussion open discussion here before we move into some uh, more exercises to get your um, uh, feedback on, on a few things. I see Karen's hand up. Um, go Karen. ahead. Thanks. Um, I'm just checking uh, when we're talking about settlement services and planning and things like that, does that include the, the language services components, the supports for across Ontario that are, are currently funded by the regional offices? Um, there's some complexities in that the CLARS model with the MLTSD funding and uh, language assessment pieces, the HEARTS database, the, you know, all of that kind of thing. Does it include those things as well as uh, the core settlement services, newcomer services? Um, since this is an IRCC funded project, and I look to Stephanie to chime in as well if she can, um, I think this will encompass those services that are IRCC funded. Um, and um, we can consider um, that and be cognizant that there are other sources of funding that feed into that as well. Stephanie, do you have anything to add there? So I, I, I don't want to say too much because I don't want to guide any of the thinking, but um, I, it could. I'll just say that, right? It's really up to, to the community to decide what's included and what's, what's not. Um, but uh, from the outset, we say it, it, could, it, it would include everything and language would be part of the core settlement services for, for IRCC. Okay. Marsha. 
thanks, Jessica. Uh, uh, just a couple of observation points and, and one uh, clarifying question. I think we are working on developing a model that would work well for our region and for our community. And that's a tremendous way to go forward because we best know what our local needs are and therefore we can respond to our local challenges appropriately as a collective. As long as we keep our own personal bias and our own you know, preferences and our individual agendas aside, and work towards the benefit of the community and the newcomers, I think we will get where we need to go with this. So kudos P PNSG. I think Cassandra, I recall when the, the draft was being created. So excellent, excellent outcome in terms of where we are headed as a group. The other piece is I think, yes, all settlement components of the work needs to be considered. Yes, they are IRCC funded, but there are distinct and definite parameters that the funder puts on each of those programs. So Karen, to your observation, would language programs be incorporated? I think ideally as a community, we want to consider all settlement services and not just the mainstream settlement services. There are also support services that we need to account for. You know, newcomers do not just go for language or newcomers do not just go for an employment service. They go for health and education and they go for many more services in the community. And how are we weaving that component in our conversation as we develop this model is a critical part of our work. And my clarifying question is, I think our local stats data will give us some demographic information, but IRCC also has landing data. And are we going to critically analyze both of those data sets to move where we need to go with, you know, what is the real picture in Peel? Great question. Would you like me to take this one? Whoever well, um, wants to. <laughs> I'm, I'm watching Jessica's face to make sure she's okay. Um, yeah, so absolutely, we do need to analyze local data. Um, right now, we've done a data buy uh, through the Western Data Center. Uh, the longitudinal immigrant database and I believe somewhat overlay with the international landing files that uh, Varsha is mentioning. Um, this was for a previous project and it was an IRCC funded data buy and so we have been delayed uh, in hearing back from StatScan due to the pandemic so we actually don't quite know what we're going to get yet but we're really hoping that we get to the core of, of some of this more recent data and then as a um, Someone mentioned in the chat, the census is also gonna roll out, uh, though towards the end of the research phase of this project. So we hope that we're gonna be able to incorporate that new fresh data and pull from the tax filer uh, files for Peel, but that'll take time and it might kind of fall right after the research phase. Uh, so let's hope, yeah. Perfect, thank you, Cassandra and, and kudos again to um, you know, pulled the proposal together and working with partners such as Varsha and others. Great. Um, any other questions or thoughts? Feel free to um, use the chat box as we as we move along, and um, maybe we can, um, you know, just keep the conversation flowing towards um, our input gathering <laughs> portion of the meeting. So yeah, let's let's turn to uh, getting your opinions on some pointed um, issues. So we want to start the project off on the on the right foot, and we want to have two discussions uh, here as a part of this forum. One is about principles, and one is about people. And so first, we'd like to get your input about those principles that you think should guide this project. You know a little bit about this project. We're on a journey together for a couple of years here. Uh, what are some of the the uh, guiding principles? Um, that we should name up front to um, enable the advisory committee um, to guide this project. So first we want to have you brainstorm your thoughts about what those guiding principles should be. We'll do this on a discussion board called Ideas Board. Um, and Ruth in a moment will give us uh, ins instructions about how to do that. And so you'll get to brainstorm your ideas and then look at other people's ideas and then like those that you like from what other people have, have written. 
And so these opinions will then take later and uh, um, work with the advisory committee to finalize the, the, the principles. So that's the first discussion about guiding principles. And then the second discussion, um, next we'll have a discussion on the criteria of the advisory committee. So we know, and, and uh, Varsha has pointed out the importance of collective thinking, right? We know that that's a really um, top of mind kind of uh, overarching guiding um, selection criteria. But beyond that, what's the right configuration of perspectives that we need to, to do this um, type of work well? Who are the right guiders? What kind of hats and perspectives um, should we have? And what's the right configuration of, the, of that? And so we'll, we'll go through a similar process where you um, suggesting some criteria um, and then looking what other people have said and liking um, and seeing um, where, where the chips land in that one. So Ruth, do you want to help us knowing how we can use this idea of boards? For this Hi. Yes, absolutely. So I'm just gonna give us a little bit of instructions and a primer on how to participate. Um, so I've put a link into the chat. There are actually two links for two separate ideas um, idea boards. One is dedicated to this question around what kinds of representation would you like to see on our advisory committee? And the other is dedicated to this question, what principles should guide this project? Now, um, I'm going to take a moment and take a breath and give everyone a chance to link to the, um, to the board. And if you can put in your, if you cannot link to the board, if you can maybe um, put a hand up or tell me in the chat, that would be super helpful. And to add a sticky note, uh, Ruth, do, is it just a left click away? <laughs> yes, I'm a, I will demonstrate in one moment. I just want to get, oh, people are adding, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to give you some instructions around how to add. So, um, you just click on the little arrow here, the little, sorry, plus sign here, and click on your sticky note. Oops, it's not giving me access, that's strange. Um, it should give you access and you can add. Um, for some reason it's not giving you, probably because I'm in on share mode. Um, so yeah, you can, you can start adding. And there's um, the other, um, the folks, the sticky notes that we have here are kind of preemptive thinking, um, some uh, initial brainstorming with the project team around um, kind of what kind of principles and membership would look like. So I am now gonna give you each uh, all five minutes to add to the idea board. So I'd like you to take five minutes to add to both the board boards. And hopefully at least up to, I would say up to three, but you don't have to put that many on each board three ideas on each board. And then I would like you to pause and take another five minutes to review each board and vote for the sticky notes that resonate with you the most. And I would like to um, vote for at least three that resonate with you the most. Does that sound about right, Rich? Is there any? Okay, so let's give you five minutes. Feel free to turn off your cameras if you need to. And Jessica, if you wanna play the, the jazz music, that would be fine too. <laughs> Thank you. 
Jessica, I'm going to chime in for one moment and um, remind people that we have two boards on the go here, and there are two links, um, and to spend some time on that link, and to give some people um, a bit of a, if, in case you're wondering how to vote, you just need to click on the corner here. And uh, click, sorry, I'm not sharing, I'm realizing now. <laughs> Sorry, you just need to click on the corner of your sticky note and it'll give you that option to, to like it, which is equivalent here as a vote. Okay. And so remember, to, let's take a moment now to uh, wrap up our idea, like posting our ideas and start reviewing for the next five minutes um, other people's ideas. So I'm going to uh, check in with one moment and if you can give me a thumbs up if you feel like you're ready to go, um, but I can also give folks a few more moments if that's what they need. Does it, let me put it this way. Does anybody need a few more moments? And maybe you can, Cassandra would like more time. Anybody else with more who needs more time? Maybe people can continue to add to as we as we review. Great. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Rich, who will, um, if he feels ready, will debrief the uh, principles page. If that makes, if that's a good place to start, Rich.
Sorry about that. My, I was bouncing all over from screen to screen monitor. monitor. <laughs> uh, why, why don't we start with the, uh, the, um, the advisory committee because that was the first one that, that most people did and that's the one that I, I uh, focused in on, on the most. Um, so yeah, thank you. There's, there's a lot of uh, um, criteria that, uh, that you've laid out there. And, um, you know, if I, if I look across all of those, uh, and we will um, kind of organize this a little bit more, um, you know, after the forum, but just, you know, my first impression is there's kind of like, like two buckets of, of criteria there. Some of them are about ranges, making sure that we have ranges of perspectives. So things like, you know, geography, different parts of, of Peel region, size of organizations, types of service providers, um, so that kind of making sure that we have a, a breadth of range. Um, and then some of the um, points are also about um, uh, specific experiences. And, and the one that uh, really um, has, you know, um, quite a bit is, um, you know, people with uh, lived experiences um, and uh, people with different content um, experts. Um, so things like that. So, um, those are some initial reflections on, on what I'm seeing here. Um, the other point that I'm also seeing is uh, uh, the one that got five votes, keep the committee small and focused. So there's the tension, right? Of making sure we have a breadth of experiences, um, but also um, you know, the, that it's a workable group. Um, and so in some cases, it may be that uh, uh, people bring more than one perspective to the table, right? Because we have multiple identities and often multiple um, experiences. And the other point that I'll just uh, make is the difference between representation and perspectives, right? We, here we're calling for perspectives as opposed to having people feel like they're representing a constituency and needing to go back and, and you know, and, uh, and poll their constituency before they can kind of contribute that this is really about wherever you're at, whatever perspectives that you bring around the table, um, we want you to speak out of that perspective perspective, uh, really being the conscience of the project, really being the critiquers, right? Uh, and making sure that whatever is proposed um, has this vetting um, through this variety of different perspectives. Any other reflections other people might have around the criteria for advisory committee members? If I may. Go ahead, Please. Marcia. I think we want to keep the committee manageable. So we certainly, if we were to consider all of the suggestions and if we were to have a fairly large advisory committee, it's not going to be that, well, from my perspective, I, I, I don't know about yours, Rich, uh, to be effective and to move the work forward. I think you want to have a manageable size. So that I would say uh, also be a consideration. Absolutely, yeah. So I think Jessica mentioned earlier, like uh, like around eight people or so. Um, yeah. You know, imagine the Zoom screen, not wanting to get into that second level of of boxes, right? Like because then you don't see everybody. And making sure that it's small enough that you know the, the the cameras are on, right? That that there's there's a sense of of uh, rolling up sleeves together, right? And 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 getting involved. Sure. Sure. Any other reflection as people see these uh, ideas for selection criteria? We'll see if this is, um, you know, how much of this is virtual and how much of this is face-to-face. -face. Wouldn't it be amazing if we actually had a face-to-face -face advisory committee meeting <laughs> sometime during the life of this project? Um, but probably for starters, we won't. Okay, well, thank you. This is good. Um, a good start for us to, to think about designing that selection criteria. And in a moment, we'll give you more um, information about how, what, what the process um, will be to get us to form that advisory committee. Ruth, do you want to um, make some comments about the principles? Um. Sure. So I've just organized it according to votes, and I'm going to take a little bit of different approach because there are so few. I will go through them. Um, so we've started, I think, kind of highest, part, highest, most kind of resonating guiding principles that we are learning from past mistakes. And we've heard kind of um, some other comments around reflecting on our history um, earlier in today's conversation, but evaluating what did not work in past years with different waves of immigrants, I think is um, um, 
yeah, uh, something that the committee can take in and think about moving forward. Um, to be respectful, inclusive, open, and transparent, and we hope kind of the collaboration model we presented to you today will be um, is a good start to that, um, including kind of the ongoing feedback that uh, we're going to be collecting from community throughout the process. Um, risk taking comes up as the next highest um, in account in an accountable manner, and I actually wanted to get some clarification around what that means and if whoever posted the owner of that post might be willing to do that. <laughs> Great. Moment. That would be me. And what I was trying to tell us is in the simplest way, you know, not to continue to go back to our comfort zones, not to continue to go back to the old ways, but to be willing to take risks with new approaches, new methods. But as long as we are not completely blindsided and, and fall flat on our face. So we do want to take risk taking, but we want to do it in an accountable way, which keeps us moving forward and not continue to look back. I think sometimes when we look too much at the back, we fail to move forward. So I would say in, in, in due respect to my colleagues who have said, you know, learn from mistakes. Yes, we want to learn from mistakes, but we do not want to continue to dwell on those mistakes because otherwise we are not putting our creative minds on what we need to move with in the future. So learn, but put that aside as mistakes that we've learned from. Let's not continue to say we've done this, let's go back. So risk taking in a manner which allows us to use creative you know, methods, approaches, initiatives, but which ultimately gets us to the outcomes that we would like to see. That was my understanding with that particular term. Thank you, Arsha. I appreciate that. So uh, looking back, but also keep moving forward in innovative ways and accountable ways. I really appreciate that. Um, I would like also some, just because um, in case folks aren't familiar with the acronym, someone, the owner of the ARAO principles, to speak to that. I think that would be Rahim. I, Rahim, was that you? Uh, that surprisingly, uh, Arsha, no. I, I did put on the, the Please, ARAO go principles. go for it. <clears throat> and it is the anti-racism, anti-oppression principles, looking at... Uh, uh, the complexity of uh, newcomers uh, from different countries that come in and the principles behind it. I think that's what I had in mind. Yeah. Thank you. And so then we'll move on a, a bit faster through kind of the rest, the balance of the sticky notes. Of course, we want innovative thinking, um, relevance and customization for newcomers, communities in the region. That is an also an important one. Um, and ensure inclusion of all IRC, IRCC funded program areas. And I think that kind of also informs somewhat um, in terms um, of membership for our advisory committee where we're looking at both IRCC funded and non-funded potentially um, in terms of membership. Uh, dream big, but remain pragmatic, wonderful. Um, realistic and practical again, transparency, open sharing, of IRCC data, how much financial support does Toronto get versus Peel? Very good. Ongoing concurrent and transformative assessment, listening to diverse perspectives, collective thinking, local outcomes driven, knowledge sharing to dissemination and local needs might be different from national needs. So um, I want to, now that we've been through them, ask if there's anything here that surprises people or anything that anyone wants to comment or emphasize um, or anything that's missing. So, so I think one thing that I would like to sort of add is that we have a culture, a working culture that is mindful, respectful, and values all voices, whether in agreement or in disagreement. And, and there are bound to be moments when we will respectfully differ from each other, but I think to keep the project objective in mind as we work together. Great, wonderful. Any other additions or comments on post exist there already? Is this a, is this a good start for us, for the advisory committee? Cool. 
Great. Then I'm gonna stop sharing for one minute just so I can toggle to screens and go back to our presentation. Um, I, I do want to give Jessica or Rich uh, a chance to put any last comments or wrap up around the two boards while I do that. I'll just give one overarching kind of, of comment, um, you know, across the boards um, and not surprisingly, um, given the configuration of, of people who are um, in, in, in this forum, um, the senses that I'm, I'm getting is that make sure that this project is grounded in the community in all of its diversity and all of its creativity. Um, that uh, grounded in community um, means who you are, who you have been. Um, so that back, backward looking um, and, and honoring that, um, but also it, it means looking forward, right? And uh, uh, having that, that creativity that is amongst this, this crowd here and, and amongst uh, uh, others in Peel region. Um, so that's the one kind of take overarching takeaway I'm, I'm, I'm hearing is make sure that this project is grounded in the community in all of its creativity and diversity. Mm -hmm. Jessica, any thoughts from you? Yeah, and, and just, um, you know, I echo that and also hearing um, about transparency and that um, people will want to hear about this project at uh, various levels of engagement. So that's another key piece um, moving forward. Um, so we'll, we'll definitely have opportunities um, for sharing as we go. And um, definitely there will be other opportunities to um, keep in touch. So um, if there are other thoughts as we go, feel free to, to email as well. Um, I'll turn it over to Rich and Ruth for this slide. Thanks, Jessica. And yeah, thanks to everybody for that input. That's really good for us to have as we, we, we begin this, this journey walking along this um, boardwalk here. Um, and so just so that we're clear about the, the first steps, what happens after this forum, um, you can see here that uh, we do plan to um, form the advisory committee. They have, we, after this forum, we will have an email um, that's sent out to all of, the, all of you um, explaining the, the selection process and, and the criteria um, for that and the applications. You can see the due date in, in a couple of weeks on, on February 3rd. Um, and then aiming for that advisory committee um, first meeting later in February. So that's the first steps that, that we're thinking there. Um, and then concurrently, we um, on the project team will start to also um, thinking about the, the demographic stuff. Cassandra uh, has been wrapping her head around that uh, a lot and hopefully getting guidance from the advisory committee um, around that as well. Um, and then starting also with the, the sector survey this spring. Um, and uh, as, as Cassandra talked about, uh, trying to get a better understanding of the lay of the land here in, in Peel region. Any questions about those first steps before we go to the closure of, of this forum? Um, Rick, Rich, um, this is a fact. Um, I think the, in relation to the statistical um, a report, I mean, you are going to, to look into the Pew statistics. Um, please be mindful of this secondary migration that uh, Peel is very famous into it. You know, people will go to different regions, different provinces and ended up in Peel, Mississauga, Brampton, Caledon. That's one thing that be mindful of it. And the second thing is, um, I'm very honest with you guys, I didn't put any notes because I couldn't. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't do it. Um, I didn't put any thoughts. I have, I have some, uh, but I think you should uh, come up with other ways of uh, capturing ideas. Particularly, I think around this table, there are so many dreamers. I'm one of them that dream about future of Selman, dream about future of resettlement of uh, refugees and immigrants. So you might come up with some other uh, ways of capturing those dreamers and talking to them and get the ideas because we have to plant a dream and wishes in order to move forward. It's not, not always the truth of the truth because we practice it. Maybe it's not, you know, we have to go back and see 
did it work or not work? So I just want to give you these two things that you capture the ideas and and other juniors that they they have some some inputs. Thank you. Thanks so much, Afat. Great, and um, definitely open to ideas, and we can use the um, uh, post uh, forum um, survey to really think about formats that will work to capture all these dreams. Because it's um, you know different containers work for others, and you know we'll we'll have to evolve as we go. Any other thoughts? Um, we'll we'll be having our next um, info forum in the summer, is what we're planning, um, and definitely open to um, feedback on on this forum. Um, and that can help shape that summer forum. So um, we'll be posting um, in the link, uh, a link in the chat box um, for your thoughts um, on, on this session and, and if that works or if there's a different format that works better for you. And just to close off, um, you know, are there any other questions um, um, or thoughts um, as we embark on this on this new project. And um, I invite you also in the chat box to maybe add a word around your hopes for the project. I think if that really captured um, nicely some ideas of um, who we have around this table and, and that we hope to have more of these dreams captured in, in some of the futures thinking um, moving forward. So if you wanna capture you know, a word or a couple words of what you hope for the project um, and we can also um, share any further thoughts as well in the in the uh, few moments we have. Great. Um, so, and I want to acknowledge um, Miriam um, from Temrec. So thank you, Miriam, for joining. And there's an amazing project as well um, going on with Tamarack around uh, participatory grant making. And some of you are involved in that. Um, and that might be a model that we also um, look to in terms of some of the different types of funding models out there that could be considered. Um, so thanks Ruth for sharing um, the link to the evaluation feedback form and wonderful to see all these words of regeneration, transfer, transformative, responsive, um, and looking forward to learning about the other projects um, across Canada. Thank you, Valdev. Um, and we <laughs> definitely hope for a, a, a better time uh, in terms of a normal um, being able to meet perhaps in person um, and dreaming towards that creative visioning and implementation, generative, do better, collaborative. That's all wonderful. Super. All right. Can I just say something else? Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, <laughs> sorry for that. Um, to the, uh, to uh, Rich and others. Um, I didn't hear, maybe you said it, but I didn't hear uh, loud enough that we are focusing on um, us and big dreamers. But on the other hand, how about we focus on two groups of newcomers who already settled. And some of them are unhappy newcomers. There are, don't say that, you know, everybody is happy, lovey-dovey, you know, okay, uh, staying in Canada. Some of them not, but there's no other choice for them. Um, so successful immigrants, maybe we just get group of them um, to talk to them. What, why you feel that you're successful? What did we do as community that you, you felt that? And other group that are really not successful and don't afraid of them because you learn so much from the suffering of people. If you hear how they suffer, then you learn more, you know, deeper lessons in order to go forward. So ask them, why you are not happy? Why you did not? Why you think that you you're not settled or uh, integrated? Why your soul is not in Canada? It's always every day flying to your country. So this kind of stuff maybe holistically give us a better picture. I don't know whether this makes sense mm -hmm. to anybody, but that's something that I didn't want to hide it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Thank you, Afad. I, I really appreciate these concrete ideas and it really speaks to, I think, the breadth of sort of your research view of, of the world. And I think um, in terms of the research phase, like what a wonderful way to think about gathering some more inputs around what is working for the end um, you know, user, if you will, of services and those who aren't able to access services. That's such a key insight. Um, and I think we'll really want to look to that um, and think about how do we incorporate some of that qualitative um, thinking and insights that really can help drive innovation because it really doesn't come from, um, you know, um, just out of the blue. It really is grounded in experience and making sure that um, each individual has the opportunity to access and experience a smooth um, transition with the available services. So I think that's such a key piece as well. Thank um, you so much. Oh, Baldev. Just one last comment, just to um, uh, uh, support effort on, on, on this. Uh, I think one of the lessons that we have learned uh, in the settlement sector is the uh, systemic racism that new immigrants face in employment in in variety of you no know, educational credentials and all that stuff and i think canada has struggled and continues to struggle about not only identifying systemic racism within structures and how to dismantle it so we have identified, we know uh, there is research that demonstrates that immigrants who come to Canada healthy, five years later, their health suffers. We know this. So it's, it's nothing new. The, the difficulty that we are having is how do we make the settlement process better for newcomers to Canada. And part of that uh, integration and settlement process is to look at structural inequities that exist. And Canada is struggling to not only identify but dismantle structural racist practices within itself. And, and I think that is what is the painful process because we can interview uh, thousands of newcomers who are struggling to get jobs, get integrated, get their education credentials met, get all those. And that is where the crux of the matter lies. And I think that is a process where we are unable to make significant changes there as well. This probably bridges to um what you're describing, Baldev, and, and really great point, um, and such a vast one. And I think, Varsha, this can bridge to your project, and um, maybe there's exactly. connections that can be made as well. So go ahead. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Jessica. That was exactly what I was going to say, that uh, Baldev, it, that issue is not being left untackled through the building inclusive practices and developing anti-racist, anti-oppressive initiative. That's the project that we are unfolding right now through the Regional Diversity Roundtable, where the focus will be on finding and addressing the systemic challenges that newcomers, that settlement sector has continued to you know, be challenged with, and also that are inherent in, in how we do business, which we need to first, understand, then find solutions that will work and change our ways. So that's the process that we are developing through that project. And even ours is a multi-year project funded through IRCC. And, and the call has already gone out to the community to begin to be involved in that initiative as well. So my ask of all of you is, if you have not looked at it, please, um, we'll be more than happy to send it again through PNSG out to all of you and get involved, get engaged. And that's the forum where we want to definitely tackle that big issue of systemic discrimination. Great, thank you, Varsha. And, and what is um, the deadline for, for your applications? So our, our, the advisory committee is coming up on Monday. So on Monday. we have okay. posted that out and sent it out broadly. Okay. Uh, and and uh, we have received a good response. We would like more if you are interested. Don't hesitate. And I think what I might do is 
put the email here and connect with us. Perfect. Um, while you're doing that, Varsha, just um, a last note about the evaluation link. Um, apologies, we have the the most current link is, is working well. So um, if there was any inconvenience with the first link, this is the functioning link um, that Ruth has shared in the chat box. And uh, thank you, Varsha, for, for sharing yeah, your email you. about your project. Thank you. Wonderful. And we'll definitely want to look at where there's some bridging opportunities between our projects. Great. Um, well, I think we've um, had a really productive um, meeting together and really appreciate your time this Friday morning um, for you to share and really think about um, future future and what, what we could look ahead to in terms of working together, but also um, what that vision could be. Um, so I think what I'll, I'll do is um, I'll post um, my email as well and, um, and others can do the same um, on, the, on the project team. And uh, if there's anything else, please feel free to reach out to us um, as we move along. So um, thank you again for everyone's time and um, maybe we'll conclude the meeting. Thank you again.